unexpected outrage. When we last saw, saw her over here, she looked and sang like this. <laughs> Harry, then of Blondie, now she's in Britain to promote a film which found this morning's papers filled with indignation. It's a disturbing and some have said a disgusting film called Videodrome. It's been passed for screening by the British Board of Film Censors and will be in our cinemas from Thursday. Its release comes at a time when everybody is concerned about the effects of unrestricted television, what with video cassettes and cable and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, Debbie Harry. <laughs> Now, were you expecting this uh, furore that's broken out over the movie? Oh, yes. I planned it all. It's all arranged? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't expect it. I didn't. And how do you feel about it? Well, I'm glad, actually, but uh, I think it's sort of incorrect. Now, why, A, why are you glad? Well, it's good for the uh, publicity of the film. It makes everybody curious about it. Yeah. And what are, and what are you sad about? What am I sad about? Yeah. Um, well, I'm not sad, but um, it's a good movie. It is a good movie. But it's, um, it's a horror film. It's, it's what it is. It's very specific. Now, I saw it uh, this morning and would not ever want to look at it again. Because <laughs> it, it is truly horrifying in parts, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And shocking in parts. Yes. Uh -huh. What did you do it for? Well, I did it because I wanted to uh, play a part in a horror film. Uh, no, I, I did it because I, I like the script and I like the... Uh, the idea behind the script, and I like Cronenberg's work. I, I think Cronenberg is really a, a great director. Mm -hmm. Now, were you offered anything else that you could choose from? I mean, you have been trying hard to get away from the Blondie scene and the music scene, and you want to establish yourself as an actress. Were you offered other things from which you had, would have had a choice? Um, well, this is the only one that I actually got after doing the screen test. They, they wanted me afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> the other ones they didn't. What else did you screen test for? Um, I don't think I ever did really a screen test. I did a couple of readings and stuff like that. And auditions and things. Yeah. Uh, now then, um, there are three or four important messages in the film, aren't there? I don't know. Well, there are. There, is, <laughs> there are. I mean, it's about, it's about overwhelming attack from the video and the screen and all that we see. Yes, you're right. Yes. Okay. Sort of McLuhan sort of message. Yeah. Marshall McLuhan. Right. But those, those important messages that occur from time to time every so often, like paragraphs, are obscured by what happens between them. Bl obliterated, in my opinion. Is that what you think? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, uh, I don't have anything to say, really. You don't find any of it disgusting, do you? Well, of course, I mean, it's, it's what it is. It's a horror film. It's, it's supposed to shock, and it's supposed to be what it is. I, have you seen Scanners? No. His, his earlier film, any of his earlier films. Uh, no, it's, he's a specific uh, kind of style. Yeah. It's quite gory, usually, and, and shocking. And he always works with topics that are very sort of modern and mythical at the same time and, and important. One of the things that he says is that public life on television is more real than private life in the flesh. Uh, which is an interesting idea, that isn't it? That yes, people it is. believe uh, what they re that what they see on the screen somehow is real, and they're not interested in what happens in, re in private life. Has this happened to you at all? I sometimes feel that um, I, I am living for people, that uh, they want me to uh, sort of experience and live for them. What do you mean by that? By uh, I don't know. By the letters that I get and stuff like that. That, that people want you to be something that you're not. Uh, well, that they sort of interpret some of the things that I do or. Um, or how my life might be according to their fantasy, mm -hmm. that I might be um, achieving something that, that they think is important to their life somehow. Uh, somehow it's related. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about your life in a minute uh, after we've had some music. Do we have to? Well, but there is another, <laughs> there is another important part of your life as an actress, isn't there, apart from the, the film you've made today or the film you're showing this week. I mean, as a part of it, as, an, as the Trafford Townsie Oh, that, right, it? yes. Uh -huh. And as a sinker, but for the moment, we shall come to that in a moment. For the time being, thank you very much, Debbie Harry. Thank you.
That's uh, Aztec Camera from Glasgow, back with Debbie Harry now. Now, do you have any ambitions when you hear that kind of noise to go back to singing? I, I didn't stop. But do you have any ambitions to do it full time <laughs> rather than be an actress? Uh, no, I want to do both things, but I want to, you know, I'm going to start performing again live. When shall we hear some music from you? Uh, I have a record coming out, a single coming out in January, February. All right. And what's that called? You know? Yeah. Rush, rush. Rush, rush. Yeah. January, February. Now you've been acting on Broadway with not very happy results. At all. I mean, you did went into a thing called uh, what? Traffic Tansy. T neck Tansy. T neck Tansy. We call it Traffic Tansy. You call it what? T neck. It's the name of a city or a town in, right. New, in New Jersey. Right. Now then, what happened to you in that episode? <sighs> well, uh, we learned how to be wrestlers from Brian Maxine, who's the, uh, one of the main champions of British wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we studied with him or trained with him for about uh, four to six weeks, and we learned everything. And you had to be a wrestler, because we last yeah. week, we did a bit on the program with Toya, who was, who was our traffic turns in Britain, yeah. our tea neck in Britain. Yes. Uh, and she had to work physically very hard, and she developed strong muscles. Do you have muscles? Yes, I got big muscles now. Watch out. <laughs> What did, kind of training did you have to do? We had to do everything. We had to just we, we um, had to do the same things that a regular wrestler does who who competes. Right. Now you previewed for what? Two or three weeks? Yes, we were open for uh, three weeks in previews. We had great audience response and and it was a lot of fun. But when the minute we got to Broadway, we opened for one night and um, they shut us down. Who did? The critics. What did they say? They hated it. What did they say? Everything. They they thought it was terrible. Everything, I mean, anything you could say that was bad, they said it. And that can, that is powerful enough for the manager or, or the owner or whoever's backing it to say, out. That's right. But that's the way Broadway works. Unless um, the backers of a show want to put in considerable amount of money to overcome this this uh, critical, uh, you know, my own, my own evil touch, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, you have to close. What did they you say about your own performance? They didn't attack the performers that much. They attacked the show. They attacked the, uh, the premise of it and the, the wrestling and the, everything was wrong with it. But the, they didn't really attack the performers. Do you have a hit list of What's critics? <laughs> I used to. I don't have any anymore. I'm, I'm nicer now. Are you? I think so. Nicer, but, but, but with bigger muscles. Bigger muscles, yeah. yeah. But I was thinking if any critics were awfully rude about the film that, that you're about to issue, you could, in England, you could go down and lay a bunch of fives on them. You know what that means? No. Well, it means you... Oh, you, a bunch of fives, fingers? Mm, mm. Uh -huh. You could go up. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you're too much of a lady. Well, no, I, I've, you know, I've lived through the music press, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what more can the world offer than that? Right, OK, you know. well, we're going to stay in a kind of muscular vein and you're going to stay with us for the time being. Debbie Harry. All Thank right. you. <laughs> Do you want to have a go with him? Are you kidding? <laughs> Which one do you want to go with? You. Wait, I mean, you've been the referee. I'll referee for you. Put your... Uh, body onto that thing there. Okay. Now, do you know the rules? Well, sort of. You're not, you put your feet under the table. Can I cheat? No, put your feet, feet under the table. table. I've got high heels on, it's not fair. Right underneath. Now, your backside has got to remain on the seat. Okay. Okay. We, your elbow must remain inside there. Okay. You ready? You've got to beat him, right? No. Come on, let's all <laughs> shout for Debbie. Right? Uh, wait, wait, hold on, get out of this. We thing. have to hold on? That's right. Okay. Okay, ready? Ready. Take the string. <laughs> Go. Come on, come on. Very easy. <laughs>